Welcome back to another UCL Fantasy video. This will be the best wildcard team for match day five, and this is recorded on the Thursday, so there could be plenty of updates and more injuries over the weekend. There's already plenty after the international break, and I'm going to cover as many as possible in this video. There's also the best limitless team. Be sure to check that out. The team selection and, of course, the deadline stream as well on Tuesday, alongside all the FPL content for Gimmick 13 and beyond. If you end up enjoying this video, smash the like button, subscribe for new, and share this to everyone that you know that loves FPL and UCL Fantasy, it'd be greatly appreciated. There's also many links in the description below for the Patreon, Championships Discord server, and the UCL Fantasy League, which has thousands of members already. But without further ado, let's jump straight into this video. With 101.2 million to spend, I have plenty of flexibility, and as we go along, I'm going to discuss some possible downgrades you can make, because some of you might not have the exact budget I do, but Already with the first player picked here, Ter Stegen is still an injury doubt. He was pulled out of the Germany squad due to a back injury and he still hasn't trained with Barcelona ahead of their clash against Rayo Vallecano. So his presence is a doubt and we don't even know if he's going to be available for next week in the Champions League. And I would still include him for now, but you have to have some list of alternatives and also backups just in case Ter Stegen is still not available. But I look at match days five and six with Porto at home and Antwerp away and I think that's a decent chance of at least one clean sheet should to stay and start both games and I also could see some save points along the way I look at the other Tuesday goalkeepers on the 28th of November and I don't like them at all you could go for the four million Shakhtar Donetsk goalkeeper I think there's a decent chance of a clean sheet in match day five but then in match day six I just wouldn't really want to go for him to be quite honest with you but that could be a shout there then you've got the Lazio goalkeeper Providel who scored in match day one against Atletico Madrid I also like his chances of a clean sheet in match day five against Celtic but then in match day six, it's Atletico Madrid away. And the other goalkeepers, Oblak away to Feyenoord. I'm not really too keen on that. I don't think it's worth six million. Then you've got Paris Saint-Germain versus Newcastle. Nick Pope or Donnarumma. I'm not a big fan of either with the remaining fixtures. AC Milan versus Dortmund, the same thing in the group of death. Edison against Leipzig could be a possibility. But even then, I think Leipzig could score there. Then young boys, Fernand Svesseda, I would avoid. And then you've got Barcelona versus Porto. And of course, you would ideally have Mark andre Ter Stegen. So the goalkeeper situation certainly is an ideal if the Stegen is still out then in terms of the 28th of November goalkeepers I would go for either Providel or Riznik from Shakhtar Donetsk I think that is the best solution and for now I'm going to have to Stegen but like I said if he is still out you've got those two goalkeepers who are even cheaper and that frees up funds for the rest of your squad now the final goalkeeper it's between two and I've been talking about them all season that's Ramiro or Sommer and I'm going to go for Ramiro he's currently in my team and I think he has a good chance of a clean sheet against Salzburg he already kept the clean sheet in the reverse fixture and he's been impressive very impressive to say the least for a 4.1 million goalkeeper who started out at 4 million so I think to Stegen and Ramiro is the ideal goalkeeper pairing for match days five and six I know Ramiro is a way to Inter Milan in the final match day of the group stages but I still think he can keep a clean sheet against Salzburg and for 4.1 million you can't really ask for too much more so let's see what happens with to Stegen and if he's fit for match day five if that's the case then I think he's the best goalkeeper in UCL Fantasy. I've covered Saliba extensively in FPL and UCL Fantasy over the last couple of weeks. I think it's a fantastic option in both fantasy formats. And in UCL Fantasy, you get a point for every three balls recovered. That goes for forwards, midfielders, and defenders. And Saliba is one of the very best in the game. So I would go for him. A home game against Lons. I think match day six will be tough for Arsenal against PSV Eindhoven. Arsenal lost their last season 2-0. And it could have been much worse in the Europa League. It was a rotated side, but Saliba played there. And he didn't have a particularly great game himself. Things are are a bit different this season I think PSV have lost some key players and Arsenal are a bit more solid defensively and have traded off the attacking fluidity for the defensive solidity but I think Saliba is a good option regardless and his ceiling is through the roof his potential is absolutely astounding at this moment in time now the next defender is another one with a lot of potential and that's going to be Rico Lewis and he's also been starting most Champions League games I bought him in on my wild card in match day four he got the assist and he had a very impressive performance there against young boys facing Leipzig next not the easiest of games but he's 4.5 million a very nice way into the Man City defense with the assist threat and the occasional ball recovery point although he's not the best at that to be quite honest
honest with you. And in match day six, he could start there against Vanus Vesida. And I think that's a fantastic differential for you for the remaining two match days of the Champions League group stages. I'm not sure if he's going to be a good option in the knockout stages, but for now, I think Rico Lewis is worth considering. And I would definitely recommend him if you are looking for a differential. The third defender is someone who's actually missed the last two Champions League games, but he's just come back from injury. And that's Jules Kunde. And if Ter Stegen is out and you want to find a cheap way into the Barcelona defence, then Kunde could be your man with that home fixture against Porto and then facing Antwerp away. So I think Kunde is a very good shout there in the Barcelona defence. Joao Cancelo is one million more expensive. If you've got extra funds and you want to make some upgrades, you could go to Cancelo. But I think Kunde is exceptional for ball recoveries this season and he should get the starts in match days five and six. The fourth defender is someone who was covered in the best limitless team video and he's someone that I haven't really covered throughout the entire campaign and that's Munoz from Real Sociedad and I don't even mind this double up in Real Sociedad defensively especially in match day five it's probably not the greatest in match day six to be quite honest with you but I think Munoz in match day five is a great option he can get the odd assists some decent ball recoveries and also some clean sheets and to be honest if I'm predicting it now I think Real Sociedad will keep a clean sheet there in match day five against Salzburg and in match day six they might concede a goal or two against Inter Milan but there might not be too much to play for by then maybe top spot between Inter Inter Milan and Real Sociedad so I would expect the likes of Inter Milan and Real Sociedad to play strong teams there regardless and it all really depends on what happens in match day five. The final defender is going to be another one covered in the best limitless team video but he's a bit less secure on paper because his team has already qualified to the knockout stages and that is Kim Min Jai so from this defensive five you've got Kim Min Jai and Rico Lewis their teams have already qualified but I still think Rico Lewis is a bit more nailed on because he's a fringe player, doesn't really play in the Premier League and he's getting his opportunities in the Cups, including the Champions League where he's doing really well. As for Kim Min Jai, you could maybe anticipate a benching or two in match day five or six, but I'm going to play it play the risk and go for Kim Min Jai. He's getting five points regularly despite not getting any clean sheets and I think against Copenhagen in match day five that is a good chance there for Bayern Munich to keep their first clean sheet of this Champions League campaign so I would go for him. His ball recoveries are absolutely sensational. 40 ball recoveries so far this season. The most of any player if I'm not mistaken so I think Kim Min Jai is the best way to cover Bayern Munich defensively and I would back him to start in match days five and six but just be careful because Bayern Munich, Manchester City and some of these other clubs that have already qualified to the knockout stages, they might start rotating as early as match day five. Sack is the second most expensive midfielder in the game behind Kevin De Bruyne and the third highest scorer amongst midfielders. Two double digit returns in home matches. He's got another one here against Lons. PSV away in match day six could be tough and Arsenal could even rotate because top spot could be secured with a win against the French opposition. And I think Saka is a great option here in match day five. I would back him in any home game and he's also fixture proof. You see him in the Premier League, even with poor underlying numbers or not the greatest of performances, he's still able to get a goal or a six. He's very consistent in terms of output and also far beyond his years in terms of his football IQ and his decision making. So I think Saka is a great option. And speaking of all those attributes and traits, the same can definitely be said about Bellingham. He's facing Napoli at home. He's just come back from injury. He's in training and I would back him to start in match days five and six. That could also be a concern though, because Real Madrid have also qualified. So they don't really need to do that. But I would back Bellingham to start at least one of the next two. And in that game, he can get double digit return quite easily and if not he will get attacking returns regardless he's got the ball recoveries the man of the match award potential and so much more I think Jude Bellingham is the best UCL fantasy option so far this season when you consider price into account as well the third midfielder is someone who's not going to be that nailed on long term but for now he's starting most games for Manchester City and that is Phil Foden I bought him in on the wild card in match day four he scored and he also got the man of the match award in match day two in the reverse fixture against Leipzig and now he's at home I would back Foden to do well here and my only concern is will he start match days five and six I'm not so sure if that's going to be the case which is a shame of course but I do like Foden in general if he can get these two starts then I would be very convinced about at least one attack and return across the next two matches the fourth midfielder is a doubt at the moment because he's got the flu and that is Kalinoglu facing Benfica away his ball recoveries have been insane for a midfielder this season he did come off early in match day four which was very frustrating for me I've got him in my team but Kalinoglu is still decent he's on penalties which is a big plus and I think he's a really good 
good way of covering the Inter Milan attack. You've also got Taram, who's a bit less nailed on, but playing up front alongside Laudaro Martinez, and now a position midfielder in UCL Fantasy. And of course, you've got Laudaro himself, who has been very consistent for the Nerazzurri. And the final midfielder is going to be a bit of a different one. And he did score in match day four, and that's Baron Echea. I think he's probably the best of the budget midfielders. Now, my original plan was to go for Bryce Mendes instead of Baron Echea and Zaire Emery instead of Bellingham. But Zaire Emery has been ruled out for the rest of the year following an injury sustained during the international break, which is a huge shame. He's also my team, so there's definitely a lot of conundrums that I need to sort out. The same goes for Musiala, who could be out for the next couple of weeks. But I think this midfield five will be really good. You could even go for Bryce Mendes and double up on the Real Sociedad midfield. So you can go for Bryce Mendes instead of Kalinoglu, Foden or Bellingham. And in order to do that, you would have to get rid of another Real Sociedad player. That could be Munoz or Ramiro in the back line. But I do like that defensive double up for Salzburg at home in match day five. So that is the midfield five. I think it's really solid. You're also covering a lot of different teams and some of the best attacks in this season's Champions League. And they also have some very good fixtures and a good chance of starting the next two games. Kane's only blank in the Champions League this season was against Copenhagen in the reverse fixture back in match day two. But facing them at home with the form he's in, I would back him to right that wrong and make it yet another huge return. He's produced two nine pointers this season and also a double digit return in the last match day with 13 points, saving those that didn't go for Haaland or at least the Haaland captaincy. But Kane for me is one of the very best UCL fantasy options, period, and especially in the front line. For me, Harry Kane and Erling Haaland are the two best for forwards in UCL Fantasy this season and I think that's the way to go. The third forward is going to be a bit more difficult but I would still go for Morata despite facing Feyenoord away and I do like the match day six fixture there for Atletico Madrid against Lazio at home and Morata has been terrific in home matches. His ceiling is very high and Atletico Madrid are scoring a lot of goals in the last year or two under Diego Simeone and Erling Haaland is going to be the big debate. Is he going to start? Is he fit? He's already been cleared pretty much to play this weekend by Fabrizio Romano and I never had any doubts myself. He's not going to miss the game against Liverpool and he will start against Leipzig, I think, because Manchester City will want to secure top spot. If they lose to Leipzig and then Leipzig win in match day six, then they could pick Man City to top spot and Pep Guardiola doesn't want to afford that to happen. He's not going to waste any chances or take any chances and because of that, I think Erling Haaland will start in match day five. In match day six, it could be different. It could be Alvarez starting as the lone striker with Erling Haaland benched, but it's worth going for Erling Haaland on the wild card still in match day five and going for that high ceiling. He scored five goals against Leipzig the last time he played them in last season's Champions League and I wouldn't be surprised if he did something similar. Maybe another hat trick could be on the card. So that is the front three. I would go for Morata and definitely Harry Kane and Haaland. I think those two are very nailed on. It's up to you who you go for for the third forward. I would also consider Gabriel Jesus. He's been really good in the Champions League, especially this season for Arsenal. Facing Lons at home, he could be a great one-week pun. You've also got Trossard in the midfield field. Bryce Mendes is still a great option. You can go for him. And if you're not able to afford this, because I've got 0.4 million in the bank, but this team overall costs around 100.8 million, then you could make some downgrades such as Foden or Bellingham to Bryce Mendes. And that should be more than enough to be able to afford this 15-man squad. In terms of the captaincy, it's what I said in the Best Limitless Team video. On the Tuesday, I would captain Erling Haaland. And on the Wednesday, I'd go for Harry Kane. And I'd only switch it if Haaland is a bit disappointing. Maybe you only get six points or less. If he gets more than that, I'd be quite happy to stick and just play it out. But Harry Kane is a great option to lean back on on the Wednesday matches. Jude Bellingham's also a really good shout this week. But in terms of the captaincy, I think it's very simple. Remember, always sort it out by date. Captain someone who's playing on the Tuesday. In this case, I'm going for Haaland. And then if he doesn't really deliver, you can always switch to captaincy during the substitution window and you can go to Harry Kane, in my opinion. And also the same goes for the goalkeepers. Be sure to have two goalkeepers playing on different days, not two playing on the same day. Otherwise, you're pretty much wasting a spot and probably a lot of funds as well, which you could be using to bolster your 50-man squad. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, then be sure to smash the like button button and subscribe for new. Let's try to get this video to over 200 likes. Let's keep on pushing towards 22,000 subscribers and beyond. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Dylan RCM, and check all the links in the description below for the Patreon, Championships Discord server, and the UCL Finest League, which has thousands of members already. I wish you all the best luck for Match Day 5 and the rest of the season, and I'll see you next time.